but it's easy. Plus, it's a lot of fun. Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today's a very exciting day because we're going to be painting a mountain lion, a puma, a cougar, step by step, and I'm going to turn my own sound off because I don't need to hear me talk. I hear it all day. All right, so this is a live stream, and I am going to be breaking down every technique, brushstroke tool, everything you need to know to be able to paint this for yourself at home. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you can see everything that I'm talking about demonstrating and teaching with one of our many robotic cameras zooming in. Oh, no, that's better. I'll take care of it myself. I'm so, you're so sweet. <laughs> My sweet can... child is bringing me coffee and creamer, but I have to control the amount of creamer. I swear, nothing could break her beat but coffee. <laughs> she could, the world could I don't be know what I'd do if I had to be on. like on a television show where <laughs> I wasn't allowed to react to things. <laughs> Do not touch my coffee. Do not. All right. I could be on the morning show. If the morning show had a painting segment, So, I so could what do is that. it we do here? We teach art to beginners, step-by-step in acrylic. We're going to be working today. I'm going to break it down into steps. We're going to timestamp each of those steps into a chapter. Those chapters are going to be put in the description and matched with the timestamp. Those timestamps then go with a mini book that's free to download about 7 to 14 days after the show. <gasps> and we have traceables if you don't want to do the drawing with me today. But I am doing the drawing. So... If you saw the grid and you saw the traceable, but you wanted to do drawing, I have decided to challenge myself to drawing the cat myself today. Oh. Cool. I know. What, what is going on with me? I have no idea. And I thought it'd be kind of nice because the background is sort of blurry and the cat's sort of black. And I just thought, could I do that? I feel like I could. So. I feel like I could. Today could be mountain lion mm -hmm. or puma <laughs> or cougar or Garfield. Or Garfield. We All just those. don't know where. Once I asked that as a quiz, and what's interesting, whenever I do a poll, there's about three people that get real mad about the poll. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the poll is. I figured out uh, just the act of polling upsets about 1% of the population deeply. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, cougar, mountain lion, puma, all of those things. And I love it. But as long as it's not running me down and chasing me to eat me. Now, I'm working on an 8x8 eight eight canvas today. We use 8x8 eight eight a lot. If you like this class and you want to join us regularly, 8x8 eight eight is a size you could buy a pack of. And no, there have been 8x8 eight eight classes and there will be future 8x8 eight eight classes. Um, if you want to know who won the last giveaway, be sure and go to the Kendall video and look for the winner either on Facebook or on, on uh, uh, YouTube. You guys got to remember to look for yourselves because you might have won. Mm. You got to check that. out. We have a giveaway today too. We do. We're going to give away a month of patronage Ooh, to one nice. lucky person anywhere in the world. Uh, so all you have to do to enter for that is to leave a comment with the hashtag the art Sherpa in it. If you're in Facebook, you can do it anytime. If you're on YouTube, you have to do it after the show is over in the comment section. The comment picker cannot see the live questions. It, it, has, it does not have access to them. It has, so it has to be in those weird little segments of comments yeah. that are in the video after a video is over. Um, but that's all it is that you have to do. Be over 18. Those things. Woo! <laughs> and then? And then? We step. And then, well, not yet, because I haven't nope. said burnt sienna oh. and Mars black. We're going to start out with a little bit of burnt sienna and Mars black, the 8x8 surface, and I'm going to use a T-square so I can start the drawing in process. Now, step. Step, step one. <laughs> Oh, gosh, John, is it another autumn? <laughs> it is. It's an autumn mountain lion. It's but an it autumn could, mountain lion. It, it could be an could autumn. It could scoot me over. <laughs> it could be an autumn cougar. It could be an autumn cougar. It could be an autumn puma. Could have been an autumn puma. Probably shorter, right, but it wasn't searched. No. It's amazing how few people wanted to know in search if I looked at the number of searches on mountain lion, how to paint it. They, none of them. <laughs> they weren't looking for cougars and mountain lions, but I felt like doing it, so I'm going to. Since this is an 8x8 eight eight canvas, I mark this at the 4-inch point, and I'm going to make a couple of up and down lines. I'm not going to do the whole grid, right? That isn't what I'm going to do, but I am going to use a kind of quadrant system so I know where I am in the canvas, and that will help me keep everything in scale when I'm trying to say, oh, things are a certain amount of big or not a certain amount of big. I am using a watercolor pencil, guys. It's a watercolor pencil. It's going to vanish into water or my paint as I paint it in. I wouldn't want to use a Prismacolor pencil or a pencil that uses clay or wax base or oil base or grease base. Hello, Only Australia. watercolor base or chalk base. 
How's everybody doing? Good. Woo! Uh, Australia I just said hello. I kind of felt like we would have more mountain lion fans in today. You know what? I did. I thought the mountain lion fandom would be huge. I, but listen, look, I'm going to really show you how to do some nature painting so it's a good day to show up. You're going to love what you learned today. Mountain lions are definitely like sharks. Need to be appreciated from far away. <laughs> do not so, pet them. They're not When pets. I think about the eyes, they kind of, you know, begin here in at the just above the four inch mark we're going to put them at the three and a half inch mark and come forward a little bit i just kind of want to know the line of my eyes when i start putting in the circles we're going to add just a little scale so if you think over here is like seven to eight inches right mm. like you come over here and you go to the side where where about is seven or six inches right so if i go here i know that the face is going to be kind of in that space now come down I'm gonna make a circle here to kind of represent the space or scale that the muzzle would have right i'm going to break down the face into shapes and constructs i'm not sure mm. see jenna mm -hmm. she just said that on monday she celebrated another birthday which begs the question is Jenna crashing random birthday parties? If she is, no, I would like to join like her. No, she's probably like your mom who has like a birthday that is either repeated in a month or is the whole month. No, but I mean like, <laughs> like it's just the way that she phrased it made me think I would go with Jenna to crash birthday parties if that's something that she did. Exactly I'm going to kind of scale about an inch down from the top. That's about where the top of the skull is going to finish off. So I have to know that. This center line is going to help me figure out where the eye positioning and ear positioning on the skull is because this is the center of the skull on a three quarter inch. It's also going to help me work in the nose and a little bit of the muzzle here. Yeah. So I like to do this freehand every once in a while because it keeps my skills a little bit sharp. I'm going to bring a little of this back. We're talking about the, the jawline. Just trying to get a sense of how big is it? How big is it? Hmm. Bigger than you would want if it was chasing you down a mountain. There is a lot of forehead on this animal. I bring, start to bring the eye down here. The other thing I like about the watercolor is that I can uh, really adjust any lines that I have and erase them easily with water. Very close to my center line is when my nose starts to come out. And it's just big and beautiful. Don't forget to make that nose big and beautiful. Because he's got a he's got a snifter on here. He's got to breathe. Let me put the little back up. Yeah. Whoop. There you go. You guys have the reference with the grid. If you want a photo reference to help you kind of anchor all that out, you have that. And now it's here with us on the now screen. Now it's here with us on the screen. I'm going to bring a little lip down. I think it's important to remember that there's almost kind of like a strong little shape on this. And then it comes back to a jowl. So can you see how that line curves up and comes back to a jowl? That's important. And then that bit of the nose is going to come out. Kind of a little bit puffed out. On him, there's a good underbite on the jaw. Like the, the little round top part of the jaw really kind of encapsulates it, encapsulates the bottom of him. And because I put in that first line, I have a good back line on that jaw. Now for the eye, I know I'm going to sketch them in even though a lot of it has to get painted out. And that's because I just want to make sure I've got the scale correctly, correct. And I've got my placement correct. And I may come in and take a little bit of water. And when I want to erase something, I just come in and go, nope, I don't like it. Let's move you. Isn't that great how I can do that? Mm. I can just change my mind. So we don't always do drawing in the classes because it does add a bit, but we've been getting a lot of requests for drawing. And I think it's okay to want to know how to draw. I just, as long as you guys understand that you don't have to draw. Mm. Bring a little eye up. I love cat eyes. Get this off though. It's going to be a whole problem. Got to pay attention to it. Gonna make sure that I'm kind of in the right scale going around. All right. And that already, I'm gonna go from the top down and I'm gonna say 
just below the three inch and then just above the four inches, the scale of the eye. Just checking scale. That's what you do every once in a while. You just check it. Now on this eye, what's wonderful is you don't really see all of it. Right? You're not going to see all of that scale. Mm. We need to make sure that there is a nice little forward bit. I'm going to come here and kind of fix this line. Make it a little more determined. Whenever you draw, if you go direct on a canvas like this, you want something where you can be like, mm, I'm going to change this a bit. I'm going to change this a bit or I'm not going to change this a bit. It's important. Make sure that I'm in a good place and position. And I think oh. that's where I got off is I got off on the depth of the face. Oh. Oh, that's eraser. Mm-hmm. You got to do that. You'll be working and you get off on the depth of the face. This is why we use a watercolor pencil. Mm -hmm. And we use a watercolor pencil that's the color of the background. So what I'm looking at, what I'm observing in the space on the canvas, right? Yeah. Is that the nose is really almost down to, gosh, just even the five inch area. Mm. And it comes out to the six. So it has to finish here on the face. If we don't get it far enough out, it's not going to look right. Mm. So just pay attention to those, those little elements. The shape isn't hard to really capture, but you do want to get the scale correct. And I'm going to kind of pull this down a little bit because there's a nice curve to it. And here I think it's important to pay attention to the fact that there is a bit of a cheek. It's going to come out. So I've got to make sure that I've got that room for that. Just working this around here. Always working on it. So drawing is exactly like painting in that it's a skill set. Mm -hmm. And you work on it. All the time. Always. You're always thinking about that skill set. I'm going to make sure I've got this a little bit. Worked out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can see I'm getting pigment on there, but it's not pigment that I'm going to regret later. Oops. What was that? Me kicking the stuff under my desk. Now the nose here, right, we want this to come out a little bit more. I'll bring this here. And I want to make sure that my eye line is level. I can always use my T-square to make sure that I have a good level eye line. Now is this right? acrylic or watercolor? This is going to be uh, acrylic. Okay. You're just using watercolor because that's a sketchyable thing. Well, yeah, it'll blend in. If I were to use grease pencils we mentioned earlier, it would ruin the painting. That would be hard. Yeah, just completely ruin it. And you don't want to ruin it. You're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out how to get it in here. You want to make sure that it's going to be okay. All right, so now we're starting to get that in, that shape in. There is a bit of a kind of backward jowl that I really like. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to come up to the ears. And what's nice about knowing the skull line, right? You know what you've got here. Then you can place the ears both at the top in a good position. And then you can come right back on that line and easily find the spot for that second ear. 
whenever you're doing any skull, animal skull, person skull, fantasy skull, there are certain accesses that you have, the access of an object, like where my eyes are on this, on my skull, the symmetry of things. And it's important to be able to find that symmetry hmm. if you want things to look like what they are. This ear is kind of a weird little forward-facing ear just at the angle that it's at, so it's yeah. really important to get it on its axis. So that when I bring the neck down, the neck is down, and then when I bring the shoulders in, the shoulders are in. So the cat looks as strong as the cat is. And thank right. you for everyone with all the super chat support. Oh, thank you the for the stars. super chat. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Drawing class. <laughs> it really I appreciate helps. the extra support for... For uh, the drawing class. Everything in the chest is right around that four inch mark. So we want the cat to be quite big here. All right. Everything in the cat's quite large here. Make sure that we are in the correct range on the jaw, which we are doing pretty good. That's uh, a very good range on our jaw. Now, predictively, I can tell you that it is going to be making sure that your symmetry is good. That's going to be the hardest thing in your painting mm. and making the animal feel weighted and hefty enough. These are big creatures. Just a lot of fur. All right. I guess I'm fussing to huh. fuss. That's okay. You know, but I find sometimes if I can sketch in some positioning of objects like i'm like okay you know your nose is going to come here and then it helps you distinctly capture what makes a particular animal look like itself like what is this how is this creature different than say a lion in its shape okay i think That looks like it's got, you got your perspectives in there. You need a bigger eye here. Predators need bigger eyes. Mm. And so sometimes I'll look at that and I'll be like, is that eye big enough? To make sure. Okay. That we have a big enough eye. And that makes sense for the creature's head. I am all about it. Are you? Mm-hmm. How are you all about it? Because you're on the eyes. Okay. We can get in here and adjust later. I think we just need to get that basic sketch in. Yeah. Again, I provided a traceable. If this just looks a little overwhelming, don't worry about it. Just use the traceable. If you want to work on the skill, work on the skill. If you just want to opt out and traceable, traceable. There's just nothing wrong with it. It's always okay. All right. Let's get a picture of this and go on to step two. And I will mix up my milk and get John to microwave it because I've let it sit here for a really long time. <laughs> do, do, do. Soon they will be able to see the studio. And the two disco balls. Thank you very much. You guys helped us get two disco balls. And they're rotating in opposite directions and are pink and purple. And it's awesome. Mm. It's good flavor. It's good flavor. We'll need a microwave, but it's good flavor. Because I've been sitting here, I've been talking, monologuing like a villain, right? Now, the background, I'm going to, the cat, I'm going to put in in kind of a black. I'll leave some of the brown shaping and I'll use some of my brown sketching in kind of a solid black. That way I can build him up off of a dark background. And this other background will be lighter. So just real quick, I'll take a number eight cat's tongue. Oh my goodness. I want to uh, thank Andy McHugh for joining Emoji Club. And I want to uh, also thank Karen A. for being back in our Emoji Club. Emoji Club is a fun club. we got to come up with a new emoji. We've earned another emoji. Two new members. It's kind of exciting. I'm going to just bring this back here.
Just make sure that we've got a good positioning of all the objects on our big cat. I'm on the left angle. Good to know. Okay. So again, that's what I'm doing is I'm just sketching him in with a little bit of brown. Just have a sense of where that basic object is and put him in black. That way, when I come in on the background, I can kind of get a sense of it. So I'll put him in in a much darker color and it will let me build up his fur when I go to do that much easier. Because in fur, one of the things that you're going to want is a deep shadow. Uh, the deep shadow in the in the uh, thickest part of the fur, the part that retains heat and protects the animal, is a lot of what makes something look like fur. So sometimes starting with a darker color can help you get there. Well, he's going to be a little bit dark for a second, and that's okay. And we can bring the background into this cat a little bit. We don't mind, and the reason that we don't mind. And come in and make sure that the nose is in good shape. It's kind of getting a rough version of him in. You don't have to be neat or tidy about it. We're building up. We just want to get the white canvas covered. If you use the traceable, you just go over your lines with the brown paint. And then fill in with the black. Still leaves you more than enough information on the cat. You know, it's really interesting. One of the things that's changed since uh, being on YouTube is I've gotten much more comfortable sharing my drawing process. I used to be um, very private about my drawing process before this. I didn't want to see pe people see me get my lines in or work my thought process out. Um, and since being online and teaching online and so many people are like, oh, can we, can we figure out how to draw? I want to learn how to draw. I've actually gotten much more comfortable and okay going, all right, well, I'm going to share this part of the process. And so you guys have been good for me in that way. You can see I just come back and make sure that the brown is sort of helping me see these different little lines that I have to know. Was I not on screen? I thought I was on screen. I'm sorry. I thought I was paying attention to that, but I must not have been. I'm not going to worry about painting in the eyes. It's good for me to kind of know where the eyes are and have scale. Once he's all in and we get out kind of our more awkward kind of sketching lines, you can kind of say, oh, well, you know, he's kind of working. You get a, you, you're like, you can see him a little bit better. Yeah, call it a step. And let's put out some more colors while John is doing the step. I'm going to put out some cad yellow. And we'll put out some cad red. I've got burned sienna out. Interestingly enough, I will put out some green. This color palette we're going to be... Huh? No. No dried. He's so sweet. Is it dried? Not dried. Because we're painting the outside. You don't need to dry at the stage. Very similar to the color palette that we're uh, doing on Tuesday with the one hoot abstract trees, which is very easy and very short. It's just an hour. Not a deep lesson like this one. Not a deep lesson. Uh, does the competition include Australia? Yeah, Carrie, at, on the patron, anybody, anywhere. <laughs> anybody, anywhere, as long as, you know, you haven't, if you're, if you're watching us here, you have the capacity to join our, our patronage because it's online. So yes, 
and patrons. You get all the patrons exclusives, all of them, all of them. So it's a good thing to do, and it's for a month. We're going to do that for a little while because we got to catch up on shipping <laughs> and printing. All right, so we have this lovely group, and let's put out some white, you know, so if we have to lighten things a little bit. And I may put out glazing liquid if I have to blend a little bit. Just little things that we use, and we'll talk about this. Glazing liquid. All the many bottles of glazing liquid. Look at all the different packaging huh. that this thing has. I think There's this is the current one. It used to be called acrylic glazing liquid gloss, and now it's gloss glazing liquid. Weirdly the same thing. How annoying is that? Um, it's a slow drying extender. Just means it slows down the drying time of your paint and lets you glaze with it. Lovely product. Not not overly pricey and just made unnecessarily difficult to understand and obscure. I'm going to come through with a uh, three quarter inch angle. You could use a bright. You could just use any brush that gives you good edge that you're comfortable with the angles on. And I'm going to start to paint in a blurry bokeh kind of background, right? You know, mixing in the different little colors that we have here. I can get into a little orange because it's fall. Kind of blend that right in. Look at that. And by doing this like back and forth light brushing, my pressure is super soft and I'm using different colors. It creates that illusion of the background having out of focus leaves and different little elements. It's a real fun way to paint. Mm -hmm. I like it. You can see I'm just letting it be all kinds of different things, aren't we? Get a little white into that. I see Boca. 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 We're doing, we just did a fun bokeh with the uh, flowers, with the little pouncers. This is a little bit kind of similar in that range. As I come down, I can definitely get a little into, maybe like a little green into my brown. Look at that, kind of fall green. I'm just working that in. I get a little bit of color, I come over to the brown, I work it into the brush, the brush is dirty. And then I'm going to loosely and abstractly brush that around. I'm not stressed about it. I'm not, however, making um, a checkered pattern. I am not um, creating a repeat of something that would really catch the eye. That's important to avoid. Because nature doesn't do that. Nature does, it hides itself. So we want to be sure that we're hiding ourselves. Little uh, black and brown down here, maybe a stronger version of that. Hmm. It's a bit darker and deeper in these woods. And a feather over the top, blend that in, soften that in. If ever I need to kind of get control over it, I can just go back and wipe the brush out with a oh. towel. Right now is this animal's like greatest time of year. It's literally colored the background color. Mm -hmm. So we really have to play with color to make sure that when we get into our animal that we're going to be really adjusting that. I think it's lovely that it's quite dark back here. So I'm going to rinse out. The only thing about it being quite dark back here is that, you know, we're going to really need that brown to know where that ends because Irene, it's quite dark. Irene asked a really good question. Mm. Um, how is the glazing gloss different from the retarder? Um, so a, a retarder, uh, which is an agent, it's a medium that stops the drying of acrylic. An agent. If, yeah. It's, if you don't get the mixture right, your paint will never dry. You can make it tacky. You can, if you follow the instructions exactly, retarders are fantastic, but you couldn't glaze with them. You could never have 
all of the slow drying agent and a little bit of pigment, right? Whereas in this, you can have all of the slow drying agent and a little bit of pigment for a glaze. In a retire, you could never do that. It would never dry. It would just be tacky and ruined on your canvas. Mm. This is almost the basic polymer that they use, I believe, for the golden open paints. Huh. Sure, open about, um, what is it? They say 24 hours? Something like that. You'd have to look at the uh, website. Open means not drying. Open time in acrylic, whenever you say, someone says it's open, what they're saying is, is the amount of time you have before it dries. Oh. Taking a little red and black and mixing our own kind of brown. I feel like I want a lighter value kind of in the center here. I'm going to take my yellow into my previous mix with the reds and yellows, and I'm going to come here and make sure I have some nice light values. Yeah, we're going to making sure that is nice and light and exciting. Mm -hmm. That's important. Contrast is important. It makes things look correct. So me adding these little pops of lighter color is a big deal. I'm also going to come here and get a little bit of uh, the red and yellow in the brush with a bit of white and come behind the ear. Yeah. Making sure that that's a light area. In the bokeh. So it seems like a background we're not thinking a lot about, but we are thinking a lot about it. Mm. Quite a lot. Okay. I think that's a very exciting background, don't you? Yeah. It's kind of abstract, but the play against this loose background and this animal, and then we'll put leaves in kind of at the end if we want to do some leaves or something up front. That's really going to create a, a, oh, a dramatic sense of uh, space and scale. It really is. And getting a sense of doing these blurred bokeh, out-of-focus backgrounds is really fantastic, especially in wildlife or portraiture, because it allows you to make the subject the focus of your painting. It, it creates an environment that they're in without having the environment detract from the subject. Because sometimes environments... That's, that's the space around whatever the subject is about can detract from, from what you're painting. Sometimes it adds, but sometimes it detracts. And it's real easy to get there into the detracty place. Mm. Let's, um, good. eye. <laughs> right? I like it when we do the eyes early mm -hmm. and get those out of the way and make them awesome. And then we know the rest of the painting is going to go okay. Do you guys like it when we do the eyes first? Yeah. I like the eyes. I like the eyes, too. Let's do the eyes first. Happy Saturday. All right. So in the eyes, I love that there's almost a silver yellow color to the eye, and I'm kind of fascinated on how, I, how I'm going to get here and keep that. And I, I don't know. It's just interesting because, you know, a lot of times yellow and black want to go uh, green, but I've got to keep it... Not green. Mm. Keep it gold. So I'm going to get brown involved, I think, to get here. Mm. I'm going to have to dry this because I can't rest my hand. I'm sorry, babe. Oh, it's okay. I don't mind. So sometimes it's necessary to dry the edges between there because it's very easy to, like she said, rest your hand on the edge of things and pick up a little bit of that paint. So if you need to, just take the time to dry. It's not a big deal. Um, Best to not use heat. Go ahead and let it thoroughly dry when you do dry it so that you don't um, end up getting some underbinding. And that's where the paint doesn't thoroughly dry and it's still a little bit wet underneath. So when you put some paint over the top of it, it's sticky and it lifts it up. So it's uh, it just takes a few more minutes or seconds sometimes even just to get that, um, that thoroughly dry stage to hit. And uh, that'll just mean that the water has evaporated out and the chemicals have re reacted. And it's starting to cure and turn into something more solid. So, ta-da! Ta-da! 
So how many of you guys are coming for the one hoop next Tuesday? One hoop palette knife paint. Mm. Super easy. A lot of fun. If you've been wanting to get those artist knives out, that's a good one. I wanted this to be dry so that if I had to do details on the eyes and I needed to rest my hand to study it, that wouldn't be such a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to begin by kind of getting into some maybe lighter colors. Just so that when I put in the eye, I've got space and scale to put in some of these details. I'm taking the brown, the black, and a balance of yellow and mixing white into it to create these fur colors. Mm. This also goes to your dogs and cats that are in this color range. This is what we're going to be using. I'm going to put that eye in as I get it. Yeah. Mm hmm There we go. It's kind of working in that space. But what is in there? Do I know? I'm going to find out now. Make a little black. And it's all number four round here. It's just a detail round. Mm. Little black there. No, there's a good amount of cheek there that still shows through, so I've got to find the balance between what's happening up here in the nose. Oh, yeah. You'll see me going into the fur color just to make sure that I've got a good line on his nose. Mm -hmm. It's going to make sense for when that second eye is in. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my white, maybe even my yellow here. Mm -hmm. My brush is still dirty with the brown and black, which is going to get us into these very strange colors in the eye. And these colors are strange in the eye. Yeah. From what we normally paint in eyes, these golden eyes, we don't normally do a golden eye. Think about it. I think this will be the first golden eye I've taught huh. on the channel in how many years we've been on? It's so James so many Bond years. of you. Hmm? It's so James Bond of you. It is. Oh, that's true. It is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> While I'm here, I might go ahead and get some of my red onto my brush. Maybe a little bit of white. My brush is sort of dirty, so it's okay. It's not going to be a very bright red. It's just while I'm here, I might come here and uh, think about the nose a bit. Make sure it's a nice big, big snifter. Mm -hmm. They have good snifters. The better to hunt and trek and sniff you with on your uh, bicycle. That is true. They can get you. I think about that a lot. <laughs> there was a big cat that was hunting people in California on the bike trail for a period of time. He got parvo. Yeah. And made it not afraid of uh, people. Yeah. Make sure you keep parvo out of your dogs and cats. Because <laughs> if a mountain lion eats them, it might eat your neighbor. That's not good. It's not good. I watched a, a thing, zombie cats. It really freaks me out. <laughs> Mostly, the my favorite part of it was the part where this, like, Siberian tiger, like, tracked this guy for, like, two weeks back to his cabin and killed him there. And I just feel like that's personal. Mm. That cat had a feeling about that dude. Must have been. And you know... And you, and you know we're Gen X because I'm, like, kind of on the side of the cat. I'm kind of like, this is how we are. We're like, what'd you do to the cat? You know, you like meet, it followed um, you for two weeks. What did you do to the cat, man? You meet a house cat, 
and they have all this personality and they're like black and sheep yeah you know you realize that they they got these emotions and feelings then multiply that by a couple hundred pounds (laughs) and yeah yeah around here it gets to be serious right i would not mess with that land shark oh definitely not it's in my Oh no, I have a pointy stick. Oh no. <laughs> it's in my oh no, this is a terrible idea space. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange. Gonna make sure. You know, bears, not a problem. Not worried about a bear. Mostly because the bear's not really a predator. It's not looking to eat me. It, it's just like it would be uh we met in the is wrong place. Is that true place though? At the wrong I time. thought a bear was kind of a predator, well, they isn't are. it? They're but they're omnivores. They're not like they're not like this cat, which is what we would consider a man eater. This cat is super a man eater. It we would fall within its normal appetite of things to snacky on. <laughs> Whereas a bear's like, no, I want honey. You're just between me and my honey. Or salmon. Or salmon. Or it's any my, other things, but we are not on my its Scooby interest. snack. I think a bear is more as having Scooby snacks. I'm adding a little bit of brown to the top of the eye. Polar bear would look at you a little differently though. Mm-hmm. It's like, nope, you're a snacky. A snack em. But, you know, you got to kind of know that going into the woods. You do, man. You need to know. Making sure we got nice perspective on the eye. I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer so I can keep layering. So what you see here is that I've started to build up that kind of construct, the shape and light in that space in the eye, keeping it in those ranges. And I've thought a little bit about the nose. And then she's got to just give it a little dry so that she can give more layers. Because acrylic's all about the layers. You guys know that. That's how we how we make it happen. So, there she is. Someone said big cats don't discriminate on gender. No, they're an equal opportunity. We'll eat your face. Mm, they're a <laughs> snacker. <laughs> like... You're like, you look slow and and not able Mm. to defend yourself. (laughs) Num, 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 num. Num, num, nums. I'm fun on a nature walk. Anyways, um, I come over to my brown and black and gold and kind of get into that range. You can kind of see it's not green. I'm kind of keeping it out of the green. And I'm going to get some white into it. There it goes quite light. From here on the inside, kind of outside, just getting it kind of light. And then as I come around, it can be a little bit darker. So we're just making sure that as the eyes are lightening. Lightning. Ooh. Right. That we are, we also have kind of like this little dark ring and then a little lighter outer ring i've got to get a smaller brush for that i think mm. i'm gonna need a smaller brush i Sometimes don't know why that always reminds do. me of sharks but because of jaws jaws is i mean taking a number one monogram liner and i'm picking this brush so that i can kind of do a very fine line here with some control this double line on the cat's eye is very important and then the way it kind of comes up on the inside also important See how that worked? Yeah. That's a big deal. Get those little eyes in there. Mm. Don't forget to enter for the giveaway. If you're on Facebook, you can leave a comment anytime. Hashtag the Art Sherpa. Be sure and come back in about a week to check to see if you've won. I'll comment on your comment and I'll pin it to the top of the thing. Close post. Uh, try to make sure that you guys know what's going on. You got to email us at support at the Sherpa.com. I have the rules pinned on Facebook now, and I'll pin them uh, after the show's over on YouTube. On YouTube, you have to wait till after the show because mm. the comment picker can't see the live chat. It can only see the after show chat. That seems reasonable. Yeah, it does seem reasonable. It does seem reasonable. But my assumption that it is reasonable doesn't necessarily make it reasonable. I'm going to add this slightly lighter color here, kind of tapping and coming in.
Getting into a little more of the gold here. Oh, yeah. I like playing with cat's eyes. I like painting eyes. I really do. It, yeah. uh, it's super exciting for me. I like it very much. Just, it's like, oh, it's the good part. I'm going to get some black right now. And I'm going to come here and put in, watch for drop hiding on your brush. Mm. A round people. Sometimes people think that you've got to put in a cat eye people, but you do not want that. Make sure that that is a good position. Feels like that got off position. Needs to be a little forward facing. So I'm going to take a bigger brush. And I'm going to move it. See how I changed my mind? Mm-hmm. If you're having any trouble with it, you just change your mind. Try it again. Is that working? There it goes. Just quick try. And that's over here. All right. Back into the black. Back, back in. in black. All right. Here we know that the pupil is really right in the corner. We barely see it. Yeah. There's a hint of it. We know it's there, but it's just hidden. This has got to be a little more forward facing. Or I'm going to have cross eyes, <laughs> which huh. is okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Sometimes a cross eyed cat is very enjoyable as a piece of art, but I really want him to be forward facing and hunting what he's hunting. Oh, yeah. Kind of getting that all worked out in there. That's what you do. Maybe get a little bit of the yellow and the red. Much more yellow. Now, does this uh, kitty have a name yet? Mm -mm, no, he will, after this is all over, and if you win the patronage giveaway today, you'll know this, I take the paintings when I'm done and I put them in the patron group and then they name them because otherwise it's going to be named uh, Mountain Lion Autumn, <laughs> like the thing. Because <laughs> it's Autumn and it's a mountain lion. That's, that's what its name is going to be. There's just no other, there's no other option there. I'm hmm. just working with these... Uh, Little colors, making small adjustments as needed. Deep face, so that's why the other eye is not as, you know, as seeable. Yeah. And that's something to think about. I'm going to tap up and down a little bit on the eye. I like that part of the eye. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Now let's get a little bit of our gray going with our black. Tappy, 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 tappy. tappy. The glazing medium. Yeah. Glazing. Oh, kind of come over the eye and kind of glaze a little bit of shadow. Always use a little bit of that. A little bit of shadow is always a good idea. It helps uh, make sure the eye feels like it's, you know, in inside of a socket. Mm. You want the eye to feel like it's inside the socket. Working that green gold there. Just like doing the eyes. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I'll come on the inside here and then across. Is that right there? Yeah. And a little bit at the front of that eye. Mm -hmm. We have other areas that will be definitely. Some highlights and reflections there. And some there. And let's call that a step because that's a lot. And that's how we get the cat's eyes in. Once you get the cat's eyes in the wrist, the cat kind of comes in really well. If you know the eyes are going to work, then you know the rest of the cat is going to work. And uh, I used to do the eyes at the end sort of as like the reward for getting to the end of the painting. But I started to learn that you guys needed to know the painting was going to go somewhere when it was in its ugly stage. <laughs> so I moved the eyes up to an earlier stage in the painting for painting. And uh, it's worked really well. Uh, was that the regular white or the super fluid white? I don't have any super fluid white out on the palette. What you see here is the golden glazing liquid. It's a gloss glazing liquid by Golden. It's the slow drying extender. And it's just going to um, keep my paint from drying out on me so fast when I need to be able to blend it or work it. And I like to have some out on the palette, especially when things are drying out quickly. I'm going to need another microwave, John. We'll work that out. Okay. okay, so now we can start putting in other elements of the cat. We know that something we're painting is going to come out. Uh, and we can start maybe working on some of the fur. I'm going to talk to you about fur. Fur, guys. Fur. So there's a bunch of brushes. They're called combs. Combs are just brushes that uh, have like, you know how like when you went to the hairdresser and they would like piece your bangs, go stimp, stimp, stimp. They're kind of trimmed out like that. They're not like rakes because these make real even um, distributed little things. You can also get, there's like a, a comb in the crystal. There's a grass comb. I have a Filbert Grainer by Princeton. There's a lot of these. You just pick what works best for you. Fluid paint does help it do its thing. And I'm going to put out a little more black. And I start getting into all my wonderful fur colors. Sometimes they're more brown. Sometimes they're more black. And we're going to start painting in the fur. Now, fur-like scales kind of layers back, right? So the you start with that fur, this back fur, and you kind of layer in because then you can pull the fur on top of it. gives you some depth kind of organically. I'm going to get a, you can see it when it's wet, a half inch grass comb. I do think a grass comb, if you're going to be doing any wildlife painting, get a grass comb. It's worth it. Or filbert grainer. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Or make one, get a filbert and trim it up. But it's good to have one in the bucket. You're going to want one in the bucket, my friends. All right, let's get some of this fur. We've got the brown on here. A little bit of the yellow. And we're going to start painting that in. Directionality of the fur. What direction is the fur going? You want to know that. right? You're going to want to know what direction does the fur go. And take a little black. Oh, thank you. Hot, hot, hot. Let it, I'll let it sit for a second and hopefully not let it completely. Uh, sometimes I'll work little areas kind of more thoroughly and then come back into them. I really need that to be covered. Otherwise, the piece won't frame well. If your edge isn't covered well enough it, in the framing, it can mess up your piece. You don't have to paint the whole edge, but you need to paint enough that the framing will work. I'm going to grab a little bit of brown. Add a little bit of yellow into it. Get a little bit of white. And you can see as I go along that kind of very easily and quickly starts to make some fur. Just bringing a little pulling back like this, pulling back little short strokes. Building up that first layer of fur. If I want a little of it to be a little more blended brown, I can come back. It's just about taking your time, having patience with yourself on these more involved projects. Right. 
you know, where you have uh, maybe a little more highlight. And you can also use the slow drying extender too to thin and fluid it out. Anywhere that you've got a little shape, you can come on the edge of that fur and kind of highlight it with little short strokes that pull out. Kind of creating that little line on the neck. A little bit along the ear. A little darker color here. You can see that we're just starting to create that short fur effect. Do you have a short fur effect, John? Sometimes it's nice to like make sure you've got a little white on there and you do little short strokes. Little brown. There's a little more brown towards the back and then it gets deeper and then it goes really gold. Now here we can kind of be a little looser because we know we're going to put some leaves or something to create that next sense of depth. If we have the energy, we may want to leave it all cat. I don't know because I kind of like the cat, but we'll see how it looks. Little short strokes into the black. This is in shadow, right? Yeah. Little black and brown. What is the directionality of the fur? In other words, what direction does the fur grow and paint in that direction? You can do it. So this definitely falls under wet cat pressure. <laughs> Not. Ooh, that's a that's a hail back to an earlier day on YouTube. But yeah, it does hail back to wet cat pressure. Um, Auntie Vicky says, would you teach how to make a comb brush? You know, I would. I'll tell you here. Here's what anytime you customize a brush and I do recommend customizing a brush. What you have to realize is, is it instantly voids the warranty. Anytime you cut or take scissors to a brush at all, the manufacturer and you have broken up. Mm. I don't care at the point I'm cutting a brush. The manufacturer and I have gone separate yes. directions anyways. We are departed from there. Yes, we're, we're doing our own thing at that point. Um, but, you know, I get, I get where they might have a feeling, I suppose. Maybe a little bit. Not really, but. Mm. And come here and. You can see it come into an already area. This is somewhat wet into wet. Yeah. Short brush strokes, little jabs, pulling forward, getting a little lighter color as I come forward because this starts to get into the light a little more, doesn't it? It does. You know, a fun thing I can do is come in and make a really distinctive orange. And also get that into the the light fur because it's a cat so it can be when we're painting we can paint very colorfully and still paint wildlife as it is that's another cool thing that sometimes we don't think about is how we have a lot of control as the artist when you're really new to painting it can feel like you don't have any control yeah when you do you have so much control as the artist you decide it's up to you. It really is though, right? Right. So the front of this, this is sort of the neck. You know who taught me my individual responsibility? Who did? Captain Planet. That's true. <laughs> Captain Planet would be so upset right now. None of that works at all. <laughs> <laughs> he would be so upset. <laughs> He'd be like, I disappear for 20 years and you do what? <laughs> like, it's like I said nothing. 
And then we're like, we were the shortest generation. We had no <laughs> influence. I don't want you to do. Never mind. I have no time for it. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there for the millennials. <laughs> They're very engaged. <laughs> I was already on to He-Man, man. <laughs> oh, so funny. I'm just putting a lighter color on that side of him. You can already see the shape of him taking place. He's a foot. Kitty, 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 kitty. That's what my dad would say. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> and I would say, don't call the land predator, dad. <laughs> it's apex. That's like going apex surfing predator. with like seals. I did a report. <laughs> I went to the library. I looked stuff up. This is all a very bad plan. You know, I didn't have to look anything up. I just had to look it in the eyes and said, yeah, you want to eat me, don't you? I've met your, like, cousins. They're, like, trying to eat my toes all the time. I'm allergic to them, so I know you and I are not going to be friends. You know it, right? Just everything about my little primate says, no. No. Bad kitty. Bad kitty. Bad kitty. Bad, bad kitty. I'm going to put on some heavy metal. And I'm gonna... <laughs> that poor cat was like, this woman. <laughs> I thought I was going to eat her, but then she made this angry noise. I don't like it. Or maybe I do. I'm not sure. I will spare her. I'm never going to get over that poor bear walking on that woman's fence, though. <laughs> like, that... I'm going to die remembering that bear's face. <laughs> You're a 12 year old girl pushing me off the wall. <gasps> you should never ever do that. No. And you know, you know that you're a mom when you look at your kid when you're watching it and you're like, do not push a bear. Like, that's what they would do. <laughs> you know, not to push a bear, right? Not even if it's eating the dog. Don't push the bear. <laughs> Don't touch the bear. And then of course, your teenager has to be all argumentative, going, well, I could see how it would happen because you would want to save the dog and you wouldn't think of it, but you're going to think of it, right? Mm. You, you. <laughs> I'm your mother. You're going to think of it. Well, I can't say what I would think of in the middle of a crisis. I'm adding a little bit more of this orange brown through here. Seriously. At which point you're like, well, then I can't let you leave the house. Patty was pointing out, you know, cougars are a small cat until they're three feet away from you. No, I've been like, I've seen a cougar. A cougar looked at my horse and been like, you look like a fat deer. <laughs> and the horse looked at the cougar and was like, I will stomp you. I will stomp you all. I will stomp a mud hole all over you. And the cat's like, you probably would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Horse did that. <laughs> cat's like, oh, you're not a deer. Yeah. We had horses that came from Colorado and uh, would winter. Uh and stuff up in the mountains. So they actually were surrounded by real, real things. Mm. And therefore had developed some very strong opinions on those things. So by the time we got in my mom's horse cap, he had some very strong feelings on uh, things like mountain lions and, well, trash on the ground. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Lots of stuff irked that horse. He was not about it. I'm going to continue to take this sort of grayed out. Can you see how I'm going through the burnt sienna, the Mars black, a little cad yellow? Sometimes I work into this orange and white. I'm not really going into the green. I clearly have more green than I will need. Hmm. And this is just this is just ready player layer one. Ah. Right? We're just starting to think about what value is this fur? Like if I were to come here and say, oh, you have a little more yellow in you? And then I was about to get a little more white. What color is this fur? Got really excited with that yellow there. I don't know what was going on with me. Mm. I'm like, whoa, be yellow. And it's like, I'm not yellow, but you like me. So I'm going to do that anyways. I'm get some of the brown. So what I'm looking at in the reference, and you guys have the reference on the website, and I'll make sure that that stays up for you to use, is I'm looking at what's hitting the light. Reference photos aren't just to do exactly what's in the reference photo. It's also to help you know 
how something, you know, would look. How, where's the light hit it? Ah. Mm. It's nice to make sure that you're allowed to use the reference photo if you're online rather than going to Pinterest and grabbing one. My strong suggestion is go to Paint My Photo or uh, one of the many, many websites that donate uh, photographs to artists. There are many. 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 I'm going to come in with a lighter color here. Fast process, painting wildlife. Mm. It's cool. I could paint it loose, 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 loose. You know, like we're going to do the birds. And you guys are coming to the bird hop, right? I will Everybody's be there. coming to the bird hop. I will be there. Everybody's coming to the bird hop. Come to the bird hop. Um, it's going to be, each class is going to be 50 minutes or less. And um, they're going to be all kind of one and a half hoot. Pretty much one hoot, but one and a half hoot. And it's going to alternate between me and my mom. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you'll have six little bird paintings on six by six canvases. And we're giving you guys 10 minute breaks between the classes this time. As per your feedback. Yeah. Because <laughs> you guys were like, what is going on? I have to pee. <laughs> I'm going to bring a little of this brown back here. Okay. I'm going to, let's call this a step because we've just got a lot more to do. And it kind of gives you a sense to sort of practice this in. Yeah. You can see what a big deal a grass comb can be. It really just gives you texture that stroke you still have to find the value you still have to find directionality but it does help you create an effect that is like fur and doesn't make you work so hard for that texture for that uh lol and p36 watch spider painting mushroom house would love to see more so cute and fun all right well i if spider would like to come back he's always invited back um you know, kids go through different stages of uh, uh, social anxiety. My uh, eldest child is on Twitch now, mm -hmm. streaming. She is doing so good they as are, a VTuber. They are. They are. They are. They are. We're working on it. It is a... They are. They are a... <laughs> thing of angry bees. What do they call those? A a swarm of bees. Swarm! She's swarm of bees. That's they are we've been swarm, using that modality is like space. they are a swarm of angry bees. They are a swarm of angry bees, but it does work. Um, so they are on Twitch, but and, I have to think uh, about it. Streaming and as a pony, so that's been kind of cool to watch. I'm very encouraging of that. Um, and I I think uh they are so talented. I yes. think my child is so talented. Don't wake the bees. <laughs> Don't wake the bees. Did we take a picture? I think I took a picture. Did you put up a step? I did take a put a step. Okay. So if you took a picture and put up a step, then we're... We're on to the next one. I'm going to continue on and start to uh, kind of maybe think about inside the ear here. Put some deep shadow up as you do. Well, you do. Well, somebody do. I do not. Somebody needs to. I'll just bring the black up first. Because that's just easier. Just easier. Make sure this is fairly covered. Yeah. Working that out. Oh, May Supernatural Investigator of Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> well, that only honey is on Twitch, May. And by the way, you need to go check that video because you might have been a lucky person over on the watercolor channel. Go mm -hmm. look. And then you got to email us. Go look and then email us. Different, different winter than today. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we see you guys and we know, like, you were lucky, we'll try to hint at you. Hey, we're lucky. Go <laughs> check it out. Uh, is the grass brush the same as a fur brush? Depends on the cut on a fur brush. Uh, sometimes I've seen 
brushes cut like this and instead of being called rakes they have been called fur brushes and i don't agree with that i don't think they make good fur um if they're cut in a similar sort of fine way as a grainer or whatever i wouldn't even consider this a particularly good fur brush um so i definitely these two these shape this style is what i like and it really is company by company you have to remember brush companies are allowed to name their brushes anything they want yeah i'm going to come forward with this little kind of hair as i go forward They don't have to. They don't have to have it based in anything at all, at all. Mm. That's a very shocking thing to learn. They don't have to tell you anything <laughs> factual at all. Nothing. Nothing. Sometimes they have to give you information about what the brush is made of. Like, is it an illegal fur or something? Um, they're such good synthetics now, though. You don't almost ever need to do fur. I still like to do some hog bristles on occasion, but. That's a really an optional choice. And come and get a little of my uh, brown and black and kind of come here and think of that a little bit. Oh, get yeah. there. Make it interesting, interesting. I'll get into my orange. Thank you guys for all the support out there. Thank you so much. These longer classes are a bit of a thing, and I like doing them. Um, we've got shorter classes coming during the week, hour-long, shorter, one-hoot classes. Mm -hmm. As per the multitudes of requests, <laughs> I'm going to take a little black and uh, kind of tip this out here. That'll be nice later. Here we go. It's kind of making that work. Well, he's really working today, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Turning out nice. All right. Continuing to get into this nice fur color. I'm going to go a lot lighter here because there's this really sort of interesting area above the eye. See, I can make short strokes and really mimic the fur. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about this. I'm into the orange hair. Look at that. Isn't that great around the eye? Yeah. I'm going to get a good position around the eye here. on this edge just giving it some eyebrows well yeah i'm just coming and catching like the fur where it's super super light uh-huh all the to better to, to see you with i have smaller combs so if it gets a little too hard to get around stuff like the eyes i can get into a smaller comb but you can see it pretty quickly gets us there yeah And go real light here. And real light there around that eye. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's looking so nice. So pretty. Pretty, pretty kitty, kitty. I'm just building it up. You just take your time. You just build it up. You'll mm -hmm. get there. It'll be gorgeous. Already gorgeous. It just takes time. 
My family it's, at this point has started to look at paintings and, 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 and realize what they're in for in a stream. <laughs> it's the, you know, the fur just takes what it takes to get the little layers it of fur in. It just does, man. But it's worth it. To me it is, but I can see how like, you know, to you guys where you're like, uh, we're going to be on how long? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I understand it. Now, around the nose, we have this sort of interesting deeper color fur. I'm going to get more into the brown and black up here. Fun stuff. And come into the lighter fur and then be like. A little forward facing. You'll notice that the fur changes direction on the nose. So I like to kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. Up here at the top. At the top. Get into the brown. Watching someone paint fur, it's a little bit better than watching cement set. <laughs> No, because you can see it's like this is much more like watching um Bird grow. No, like a picture uh develop. You know, it's a lot more like watercolor where the fur comes in in layers and layers and layers and it develops rather than, you know. Yeah, that sort of rough emerges. crazy underpainting stage which yeah. is like all bad all the time. All bad all the time. <laughs> Just underpaintings. They're so unkind. Who invented that? Let's find them and beat them up. No, huh. violence is never the answer. No. I want to thank you all for your amazing support um, about everything lately. You guys have been incredible. Really have. Just amazing. Amazing. Again, it's just about... Two to three good layers here. Uh, it doesn't take too long once you get the base in, but getting the base takes, you just have to commit to the ace of base here. Yes. There you go. So you got a little, little black mountain cat going there. He's a little mountain cat. Yeah. Mountain cat. Making sure our chin is a nice, fully developed mm -hmm. chin chin. And then, you know, if you have to, if you're like in here and you're like, hey, I think that the background should come back and uh, bokeh kind of some of this out, guess what? What's that? You just come in and you bokeh it out here. Uh. Isn't that great? That is kind of cool. It gives you some it gives contrast. You options. Yeah. And lets you, uh, if you feel like you need to change the line of that jaw just a little bit because it's kind of tapered going up into the cat, hey, not a problem. Change it up. Change it up. Don't worry. Change it up. 
going to get some of this uh, air coming out the ear. I'm adding a little water to my brush just to improve the blending. And I'll start with gray at first. And much like there, I might actually come in and um, kind of bokeh into this as well. Mm. And let that dry because I want to be able to go over that ear. There we go. So you can see that we will work things out as we need to. You got it. That seems reasonable. Even if you didn't know you got it. Such a strange little curly ear, right? Yeah. It's like, hmm, what am I doing here? I'm like, I don't know. You just paint. You just paint what you see. You let it help you find itself. Come in here and then paint what you see in here. Always following, you can see I'm just following the directionality of that inner ear. If I take out too much of the block, I just come back and put that deep value in. Hmm. I'm going to make sure that I've got nice, um, again, bokeh around this ear. And yeah, I can even use the, the fur brush to get it. It hasn't hurt him just uh, evaluating and changing the lines, making sure that they look correct to the cat's head. Right. And that's what you're doing. Well, that's what we're doing. I don't know if you're doing it with me. Are you doing it with me, guys? I'm watching. Is that well, you, you are stuck with me. They're not stuck. They can leave. You are, could... are stuck here till the stream is over. I could be here. I could not be here. You are stuck here. And has no way of leaving. He's just pretending he has free will. <laughs> what else have I got to do? This is literally what we do now. So this nothing. is what I do. Actually, that's not true. John does a lot. He's super busy. Some things. Just short little strokes. See how I'm just kind of paying attention to the directionality of the fur. I see it. And I want to leave the this little... All the cameras. Kind of center area on this cat. It's a little bit darker. Come into some of this little darker fur here. I love doing this. This is really fun. Yeah. All right. Let's call this a step because we did a lot. You did do a lot. We did a lot. We're getting through this cat. It's going to be, I think this is going to be one of the prettier, prettier paintings that we've got going on. I think we had another really great cat we did just a half second ago. And so this is going to go really, really nice with that. Um, I like doing big cats. It's a lot of fun. Oh, cheetah. We did a cheetah. But this, is, I think, is going to even be nicer than the cheetah. So if you like the cheetah and that was fun for you, this will be even nicer than the cheetah, I think. You know, you just go through and you... You just do the layers, right? So here we are. We're just doing the layers. Now, some things that will start to pull this face really together are a couple elements. Uh, the white around the nose, the nose itself, under the chin, and then as we start to put the distinctive fur uh, values and markings on there that really say what this cat is, the cat will really start to be revealed. Mm -hmm. To get there, though, I'm going to need to grab my number four round. Sip my coffee and hope that the scalding coffee is just warm now. How is it? I miss every time the ideal uh, temp. <laughs> wah, wah. I'll it's like it too hot and then it's like too cool and then. We'll see what we can do. We're going to take some black. Going to come kind of in a little point here. Just kind of getting that shape. 
that we need. I'm going to go a little bit over here. Yeah, I might get some brown involved, right? Still kind of red. Front of the nose, kind of coming in and down. And then as we want, we get right into the white. A lot more white into it. That little outside area, that nose. I mean, with a darker color here. Mm -hmm. Should be a nice, big, big snozzle. So it can smell all It's got to smell all the tasty, tasty things. things. And, and you have to believe that it can smell the tasty, tasty things. I'm also going to come in and kind of maybe talk a little bit initially about some of that whisker shapage. Pretty good. Pretty okay. I'm going to get some white. Go ahead and tint it with our nose color, but it's pretty light. And if I get too much, I'll bring it back. I think that's just too much of the bright color. There we go. It's really just finding that spot. And you got to find that sweet spot. I'm loving his nose, like mm. for realsies. Okay, I'll show you the Filbert Grainer. This is the Filbert Grainer by Princeton. It's just another option that you've got. Let's get a little white on here. Now this white is of course toned because we've got brown and black and all the colors we've been mixing over here by it. And I'm loading up. I'm doing soft little touches and then maybe some more involved touches because as you can see, there's this bit of uh, like white hair in among the black hairs, right? Yeah. We definitely want to capture that. I'm kind of coming up, it's a little bit white hair. Can you even uh, get another little bit of black hair coming along there? It's for weird, right? Yeah. A little bit of weird. And at first, I'll get a little gray. If I need more water to improve the thinning of my paint, I will get it. And change it to some cleaner water, guys. Hmm. Just so you know, getting cleaner water. This isn't my pure white. It's just the beginning, which we won't really see until we add some highlights, but it's just the start and we need to get there, right? Yeah. The red and say, ooh. Perhaps there's some. Little bits of inside the hair. A little more black. Come along here and, you know, make sure that there's a nice and a little bit of black fur coming around perhaps this ear area. See how we're there? Bringing that down. Now I'm going to get into my lighter fur color. I'm loading it up. This is the grainer. Fur comb grainer. Kind of same same.
There we go. Bring a little of that fur to the edge. You're amazing. Mmm. I have not checked the doc for questions. We should check the doc for questions. I can do it. So first question is, what is with a dry brush? Okay, so with a dry brush, you, you don't want a lot of water in your brush. Your brush should be at most damp and you don't want a lot of paint on it, right? So that when you do your stroke, if you'll see here, a lot of the canvas underneath is showing through, right? It's about allowing what's underneath to show through and you're just kind of blending or blushing using the top or the surface of the texture of the canvas. It can take a minute to learn to dry brush. It is a necessary skill in your, your to paint, you're gonna need to know how to blend wet into wet. Oh, you're gonna need to know how to blend wet into wet, right? Create blends between transitional colors while the paint's still wet. You're gonna need to do aloprema, which is that you layer colors over each other. Um, is there any more? Any more? More, more? More, 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 more. Okay, good. And then we'll heat that. Somewhere I have a spoon. If I steal with if I stir with a palette knife, is no, everyone no, gonna freak no, out? No. This is a spoon. It is a spoon. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> My mom stresses him out. <laughs> Cause she would, she'd be like, I'm just gonna get this palette knife, John. Oh. Mm. I could use a little more equipment. No more. And then heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since we're going to be here for a minute, you don't mind me getting my coffee, do you? All right. Fuel for the Sherpa. Okay. So we're going to continue to light that around there. So, yeah, definitely as you're painting, you've got to learn to the wet and the wet. You've got to a la prima. You've got to be able to do S coat strokes, curved strokes, straight lines, fine lines, dry brushing, um, there's a couple textures and techniques that you just have to have down just to start, just to get. But you get them in about 20 paintings of just playing and painting. You'll, you'll get there. I just add another little layer here. And so it's important to be all the time looking for those techniques and those, those things that you need to be able to do, right? So this particular brush, it is helping me. I still have to know how to paint fur though. It just makes it a smidge bit less inconvenient, right? But sometimes that's all you need to get back to having fun with what you're doing in your painting. Sometimes all you need is to start to have fun again. And if you haven't been having fun, in your art, then you know that you've got to do something like this to get that going again. Treat yourself to a grainer or a grass comb, right? Treat yourself. One, also, here's a tip. Grass combs are pretty good at painting grass. <laughs> and also the reflections and ripples in water and, oh, just a whole myriad of things. Yeah, sarcasm. I dipped into the bucket. I dipped into the bucket. Taking a little bit of my dark paint and just making sure the edge of that ear has a little bit of a... <gasps> what? Did I get on? You can see I'm just getting my white. If I need a slightly less light, light, I can just come back into another bit of paint and... You're just kind of trying to get that shape of the fur. How's the fur going? How's the fur going? Don't forget orange. Oranges. oranges are very important.
little short brush strokes coming through here. What you want? <sighs> okay. More little short brush strokes coming through here. Good evening from South Africa. Uh huh. Hello, South Africa. Hello, South Africa. What size grass comb is that? This is a half inch. Half. I have a half inch in my bucket at all times. I have this three eighths inch. I have a little teeny tiny one. I've got some more actually, depending oh. on where we're at in the washing stage. There's always a few in here. I've got a really small one somewhere, but I don't know where it is. But luckily I don't need it at this moment, so it can be hiding from me if it feels like it. Grass combs can be like that. Yeah. Heidi, Heidi. A lot of companies make them. If you just understand what you're looking for, if you know it can be called a grainer, you know it can be called a comb, then you're going to be able to find it pretty easily. I like to uh, get into the details. Yep. And uh, like the the light on this fur coming down here, it's very yeah. exciting to me. Like making the little lines to talk about it. Little lines. Short little strokes here. So we do some little short little strokes, and that's sort of fun too. Yeah. The curves, short little strokes. Talking about short little hairs. I just want to do that. I don't know. I think we all want to do it. I feel like I want to do it all the time. You know, a little bit more into this, like, kind of champagne color. Mm hmm. They're such a n natural, neutral little color, aren't they? It really is kind of pretty. Just little short strokes. Short, 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 short. Short about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do... Little short strokes. Yeah. Not painting every individual hair. We certainly are still painting value and all those things that we have to worry about. Mm -hmm. We just are able to do it in a more relaxed way. Yeah. Get a little bit of my yellow and orange and come here. And you can see I just, beyond even just worrying about like, is it all the one fur color? I like to play with color a little bit in any painting because that's why you paint with paint right as you get to do color you get to make things more when they need to be more yep just get right into that red and let it all blend on the brush and come through wipe out back into this because this is such a light value Another little kind of highlight of fur there. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, we're just getting there, aren't we? Just kind of moving along. Just moving along, just painting along. It's a day. It's going to be a day. That's okay. We don't mind. Some paintings, you know, you do in an hour, mm -hmm. like what we're going to do on Tuesday. That's an hour. Some paintings you do in several. I'm pretty fast at this type of painting, and it's still going to take me a half second to get there. Let me just go kind of creating that little fur area.
I haven't even come back with dark fur. I know. <laughs> so much is going right. We haven't even gotten into all of it yet. A little run into it, kind of go more orange here. Mm -hmm. Again, and I, I don't want to make patterns. I'm not trying to make rows, and so sometimes you'll see me go back and kind of make sure that I don't have rows. I have flows, but not rows. Indeed. Flows, but not rows. I'm going to start with a little more white into this. It's an off white. Yep. Right. Does a grainer brush have a shorter bristle than a rake? Well, not uniformly. And here's why because there's no standard. But mm. here I have a rake and I have a grainer and I have a comb. There isn't like all the brush companies uh, have agreed that it's going to be one thing or another. They did not. They did not. Make an agreement. In there any way. No accord. There is no accord. There is no parlay in paint brushes. There we go. I'm just starting to put that little. It's all privateers on the open ocean. Look at that. Starting to get that little wonderful. Yes, the sound effects do help. Big art hugs to everybody in chat helping support us. Thank you so much. Thank you for Super Chat and, and the stickers. It means a lot and just the shares and the likes and the... I will make an admission. Uh. I I have spent more money on DMX sparkly lights than I was allocated. Yeah, and then we also wanted to support the Jenkins, and so we we got a couple paintings, a hot thing that you can do too. So it's been a thing. They but my lights they move. They do move. They're sparkly. You can't see them yet, but they do. They're like. Ooh. Ooh, they're doing all sorts of light things. When you guys see them, you're going to be so happy. And patrons will see them first. We are going to be able to do like a regular old studio look aroundish tour. Yes. Um, and that's because I swept the floor. <laughs> Which meant that I cleaned up the floor enough to be swept. And now <laughs> we can see the floor. So you can see the studio. So You're so funny. Oh my gosh. Who are you? I don't know you. Sometimes I gotta rinse out and you can see him just finding those directions. And he's still dark. We haven't found his highlights, but I mean come on, right? What does that look like? Things I might do if it if it uh gets a uh, ever intense here, I'll be like, I'll, I'll paint cats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that based on all of the lights, I could be a DJ. Yeah. No, I'm actually, you could be a DJ straight up. Like, for sure. <laughs> I would have to be part of the Euro trash underground. What is that? That sounds offensive. No, it's like a thing. Like, that was... <laughs> That was Sean Paul's show, Euro Trash. Oh, was it? In the nineties, yeah. Well, in the nineties, we we didn't settle bunch of offensive stuff. No, like it it's not. It so it has to do with the <laughs> musical uh, house music scene, like. Uh, I'm just like, saying, I'm not, not going to cancel you. I'm just. No, it's not. It's like. <laughs> I'm not canceling you. <laughs> it's a thing that's okay. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> <laughs> if I get notified that my 
fashion sense. If you want me to go Zolf. like the whole way on this and really take this all to the final fur, you know, definitely hit the thumbs up. Final fur. You want to see what this looks like at the final fur? It's, it's the, the final, final countdown. <laughs> this is why we're married. <sighs> So you guys know, because you know as well, that we are in tuned. I'm always like, it's so fun when someone comes in and they think they're going to divide and conquer, and then they find out there is none. Yeah. Mm Mm-mm. There is just us. (laughs) I'm just going to do real short little strokes. I want to kind of catch the highlights of those little hairs. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh! Sorry. I just mm. get excited with myself sometimes. It's just a, a thing that I have going on. I gotta, what I'm doing here is trying to find the Perfect angle. By spinning the Susan? Well, just by, yeah, I have to spin the Susan. I'm trying to put the, make sure that the painting is at the right angle for me to do the technique. Perhaps this is a whirling Susan. <laughs> but look at that face now. Come on, right? That's a face that says, you look delicious. It, well, I think he has said that a couple of times, but we understand. Don't we? Understand what has to be eaten or not eaten. I need a follow up question about that. Uh huh. You know, when a child comes in here to impatiently ask how much longer you're going to be doing your job, and you're like, what? What? Are you seriously coming in here to ask me when I'm going to be done with my job? It's okay. And then to give me the impatient <sighs> you're so teenage strict. face? Like, what? You're so strict. I'm just, I think it's a bit ridiculous. I know you do, because you're so strict. I think I'm like... No, that's just like walking up to a, you know, cougar and saying, you look like a cute kitty, I'll pet you. Don't pet the cougar. No, Mm-mm. this would be a bad idea. Mm-mm. Much like walking into your parents who are in the middle of a live YouTube broadcast and saying how much longer you're going to be. You know, I was never <laughs> going to do it, but I was really glad about Tiger King because I learned, like, don't pet the cougar. It's not good for the cougar. Like, like, I was, I was never going to do things. it. You were never going to get me to go pet a wild animal. Um. But it was just, it was good to learn that you shouldn't. So nope. I feel very validated in my no pet the wild animal policies. Does that make sense? It does. I'm like, see, see, that's right. Adding little small little areas of fur. And so a lot of times you're just coming in and you're getting a lighter value and you're coming in and. Finding a moment. Find a moment, John. I know where the moments are at. Do you know where the moments are at? Yes. It takes a minute to pay fur. I don't know what to tell everybody. I don't even think I'm going to leaf. That's okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to stick with no, fur. You, I, well, I mean, you, you can leaf if you want to. You can leaf if you want to. But your friends will leaf with you. My friends will leaf with me. Because my friends are leaf. And when we all leaf, then we're leafy, leafy, leaf. <laughs> Then you're a tree. Be a tree. Maybe a bush. A shrubbery. This is a serious art show. Clearly. Where I teach serious things. Do, do, do. Except I do. Internet streaming says that was an issue. It blinks. What, it, did it wink at us? It's blinking at us. I think there may be, summer, there may be some summertime interneting. Or, so, yeah. or our young ones are like, 
they don't mean it when they say get off the internet. It's true. It's a little buffering here and there. I can see it. <laughs> they're like, I know they said it, but it probably isn't true. I may have to round the house and be like, no more. There's a little buffering. I saw the, I saw the small buffering. We're going to stick with it, though. This one's almost like, done. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute you think that. Isn't it? <laughs> it's so adorable that you think it's oh, almost done. I thought so. So these are little short marks that you can see that we're pulling through the face. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, guys. Don't you just love it? I do. Just love it. It's very cool. Makes me happy. Getting a little nice warm orange going. Yeah. Yeah. A little white then though on occasion. So we can come up here and try to gold that up. Uh oh. There Checking on the intertubes. Oh, is that is <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Check on your children. Making sure those tubes are seen. <laughs> Why should I? But I do laugh a little bit in my head and in my heart. I'm going to get some brown hair. So I don't want those, those little hairs up here to be too long, and I may come back and shorten them. Okay, mm -hmm. Just shorten them up with a lighter grouping. Them. You don't want them to be too long. They're short little hairs. Do, do, short, do. short, short little hairs. So you got to make short little strokes where they are. Make them. No, Mom. <laughs> my mom is calling. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's your mother. It's my mother for sure. She probably saw my, I'd like to use a single color list. the <laughs> Because I was like, can we use just one set color list for the bird hop so people could just get what? that one color list and not have to buy a bunch of weird colors? You probably broke people's brains. Hmm. Because I didn't take my mom's call. I don't know, because you suggested some things. Oh, I always suggest things. I washed her brushes for Your years. Most I get to suggest stuff. <laughs> I do. I did. I washed the brushes for years. I get to suggest things. I paid my dues. Now John Little pays those dues, but I pay my dues. Mm. I'm taking a little bit of that uh, kind of orange, and I'm going to pick a few little highlights along this little part of the bent fur. See how I do? Uh, I do. Blend that in. I like to also get maybe some of this and... A little, a little more fluid. Yeah. A little more water to make it flow. Flow. Flow, 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 flow. A little more black in the flow, 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 flow. Does the camera think we don't mean it anymore? I don't know. Look at us go. The camera doesn't have any particular feelings about it. Camera should. I'm going to get a bunch of white, load it on my brush, still on the grass comb. Now that you've all gone online to find them and order them. <laughs> the brush guys, they have, they're, they're, yeah. they reminded me, they sent me an email saying, did you know we still have all the stuff in stock that you want generally cheaper than everyone else? And no, it is. It is cheaper over the brush guys. I know. I well, he, he sent me an email. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Stuart, he was like. Hi, Stuart. He was like, did you know? And I was like, I did You know. can get a discount if you go to the brush guys. Be sure you spell that correctly. You're going to end up on a website that you may or may not enjoy, but definitely is not safe for work. Um, you want to go to the one with brushes, mm -hmm. <laughs> those guys. Um, and if you use the Art Sherpa at checkout, you get a discount. Yep. Getting a little more. And they generally on here. have a lot of the brushes that you see here uh, really on pretty good sale. So. And if it's not exactly the one that we have, they have other ones very similar. So you could explore and yeah. do some shopification. Shopification? 
sir? Well, I mean, if you're going to support a small business, that's a good business to support. Would you guys like to know what my current favorite TV obsession is? After you support the brush guys, go there at the Art Sherpa, 5% off whatever order. Is, you, you guys want to like know? Dangerously um, loaded question. Is there a reason why the flow is coming from the water instead of the medium? The um, just I'm used to just grabbing the water. I could probably use the medium to get a similar one, but All there's things. no specific reason. Oh, uh, I might be doing it so that my paint is drying faster. That way I can layer. So do you guys want to know my favorite show right now? I don't know. Well, there's really two, but I'll tell you my first favorite. The Mighty Booch. <laughs> and DaCosta says, Cinnamon, you're an amazing artist. This painting is beautiful. Thank you, Anne DaCosta. You are my favorite right now. Because Vince Noir is still the king of the mods. <laughs> you seem to think so. Well, he is. <laughs> Raises hand, says Linda's like, I know what her favorite show is. Because she has to listen to me go on and on about my favorite shows. <laughs> Uh, the brush guys are out of stock for the grass comb she's using. <gasps> uh, there it, okay, so this is the ruby satin grass comb. You could also use the crystal grass comb. And if you can't get that, the Filbert Grainer by Princeton. Mm. And Simply Simmons also makes one that's not bad. $3. If this helps. I don't know if this helps. See, Sharon knows. She says the Mighty Boosh is awesome. Much lighter color right here. Much lighter color. Fanning right, fanning left. And I'm getting that little area of, of hair. 